Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this undefined scale caricaturized M5 Stewart light tank. Now the model in this video is built for my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. However, like I often mention in these smaller scale build videos, I frequently take on commission build projects from models ranging between 135th scale and 16th scale. For availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address which is listed below and that is info at eastcoastarmory.com. Now the model itself was built predominantly out of the box. Very few alterations were made to this build, but in this video we're gonna go over the build itself as well as review the base starter kit. So stay tuned because there's gonna be a lot of cool info coming at you. However, before we go any further, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around this model. And this model here is the American M5 Stuart light tank, or at least that's what it's supposed to be. In actuality, this is a caricaturized rendition of the M5 Stuart from the video game World War Tunes. Which means that this video is following in the EastCoastArmory.com channel's tradition of being an April Fool's Day build. Now, World War Tunes is a online class-based video game that takes place during a World War II time frame. But unlike the other military shooters that are out there, World War Tunes utilizes this unique caricaturized art style. Kind of similar in the way like you see on Team Fortress 2. Now the video game has been around for a number of years and within the last three or four or so they've released several model kits of many of the vehicles in the game. This tour here being one of the most recent. Now what's unique about their kits is that although they are very cartoonish in their overall appearance, they still have the overall look, feel, and attitude of the vehicle that they are representing. And this Stuart model here is no exception. Before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a step back to when the model was first started to get a good idea on what the base starter kit supplies you with. And here's the model at the start of the build. For the base starter kit, I'll be utilizing this Meng undefined scale World War Tunes caricaturized M5 Stuart light tank. Now these kits here are relatively new on the market. Meng released the M5 kit here back in 2018. Along with a few other kits that are from the World War Tunes line, since the line does appear to be expanding, probably due to the popularity of not just the game, but the kits themselves. Now just like with the other World War II builds I've done in the past, this kit here is going to be comprised of mainly injection molded plastic parts that are all made from polystyrene. With the exception of course of the tracks which generally are a single piece continuous rubber band type setup. Now these kits here do have a reputation of being very simplistic to build and since this is one of the newer releases I was told by one of my viewers on the last World War Tunes build video that I've done that the Stuart along with their newer generation kits are a lot more simpler compared to their first generation offerings. We'll find out more of course once I crack open the box. Now as simplistic as these kits may be they are also very prolific. These kits here are found in places like Hobby Lobby however I've yet to find any of the Stuart kits in this type of retailer. This kit here I acquired from Amazon.com and it's not uncommon to find these online from the other e-tailers that are around. The kits themselves are a little bit more pricier compared to the earlier renditions which generally hovered around the $12 to $15 range. This kit here I was able to pick up for about 20 bucks. So it's a little bit more expensive but the kits themselves do make for fun builds nonetheless. Now starting with the box, here we have the graphic design. Now the model here is just like all the other kits from the World War II's lineup with the way the graphic design is orientated. In the center here we have the center swipe with a nice little characterized painterly depiction of an M5 Stuart tank. We have these vertical or I should say these diagonal cut line bands. Now the reason for this is of course to give a little bit of spice to the design but also has to do with some branding. All of the World War II boxes have this type of a uh, layout and the reason for that is because well when you stack them up in a store like if I put the other kit right here next to it you're gonna see how it has this nice continuous little swipe going on to it and that's why they went ahead and did this with the swipes how the graphics all just like flow together in a nice continuous line it's a nice little trick that they employed now 
Here we have, of course, these kits are from Meng. The Stewart kit is number WWT-012. There's the logo. On the side here, just like with the other vehicles, we have a little profile shot of what the model is intended to look like. Here's the game developer, which I'm not even going to attempt to even pronounce. And just some marketing back here for the paints that are recommended by Meng, which look to be made by AK Pigments. Now opening up the box, first I want to say that the model was not concealed in any sort of shrink wrap or anything, and there's no little sticker that holds the box together. The way you see it is the way it was shipped to me. So let me just pop it open, dump out the contents, and there's the kit in its entirety. Now like the other World War II's kits that, that I've done, they were in the exact same format where all the kit components are integrally sealed in one plastic bag. And like I said before, the kit is comprised of exclusively polystyrene injection molded plastic. With of course the exception of the track links, or I should say the track bands that I have here and here. Let me cut this guy open with my X-Acto knife and dump out the contents. Starting with the hull, here we have the lower hull pan here. It is a one piece tooling, no seams or halves need to be glued together, unlike some of the other kits that were released in this series. Just like with the other ones, thick plastic for the tooling, which for this application is perfectly fine, and it actually makes for a nice little robust bit of kit. Same can also be said for the upper hull. There is some detailing molded in, like here we have a little grill work and little bolts found on the side armor. The detailing itself is pretty crisp for the type of medium that they're represented and also with the type of feel that the kit's supposed to have. Remember, it's not supposed to be a super detailed, accurate rendition of the M5. It's a caricature, so some creative licensing can be exhibited in that regard. Having said that, the tooling again is very nicely done and is basically on par with modern tooling of today. This runner here is both the turret. Here we have the suspension as well. Here go the road wheels, sprocket, rear idler, as well as some other fittings like bow headlights with their brush guards. From there now brings us to the main runner, where we have the remainder of the suspension components, as well as the turret components as well. Of course, these are the bogies, or the bogie housings, I should say. Gun elevation roller, front armor plate, rear hatch area, and just the other bits odds and ends, which are needed to fully build one of these tanks. Of course, there's the mantlet and some small visor hatches for the turret. From the runner, now takes to the decal sheet. Decals, it's hard to see because there's a protective little tissue paper over them, but these are your typical worst light decals, which one would expect for any 135th scale or plastic model kit in for that matter, and from what I've seen from the other World War II builds I've done, the decals are of very good quality. From there now brings us to the instruction sheet. Now just like with the other World War II builds, the instructions are nicely done with their graphic design. It's very colorful as opposed to just black and white CAD drawings. And just like with the other ones, everything is pretty self-explanatory, and the kits should just basically rattle together. And make for a nice, qu fun, quick little build. Oh, last but not least, here go the Caterpillar tracks. These are supposed to be representing the rubber block pattern of Stewart track. 
And just like with the Sherman that they did, you can see very similar in design with the tooling. Again, it's a one piece vinyl rubber band type track. And for this subject matter, these tracks should be more than suffice for the build. Starting with the model suspension, all the components that you see on this model here are totally stock and built literally out of the box. It's really not much to talk about. The units went on without any problems. Now, when it comes to the track, the track is a single piece rubber band type track, and you can see the details that are integrally molded onto these units now that everything is fully painted which look actually pretty good and fit in very well with the overall scope and the stylization that's on the rest of the model. Now the unit can be made to be pushable, however once the track is fully painted and weathered like the way it is on this model here, that's definitely something you don't want to do as the paint will cause it to chip and it'll just become messy very quickly. But if you feel so inclined to have one of these models as a, as a playable toy, that is something that can be done with these builds. Now moving up from the suspension brings us to the upper hull and by and large everything you see here is totally stock. The one modification that I did make was to the bow machine gun that we have here with a Dremel or with a pin vise and a small bit. I went ahead and drilled out the muzzle section. This is something that I generally do on all of my smaller scale builds and these guys here aren't excluded. Once done it definitely helps the look of the model and really makes it polish up all that much more. Now from the front now takes us to the rear section. Here you can see the other details such as the tow hitch, the tow shackles. They went ahead and even did the rear engine hatch doors and from up here we have all of the Pioneer tools and even the spare track racks. The vehicle itself is very nicely detailed. However, I will point out that this model here is no different from many of the other World War II tanks with the fit of a lot of these smaller pieces. This was mentioned in my other videos but one feature that I see on these tanks is that with the smaller tools, the way they have to go into the model, there are these small pegs and these corresponding holes, which is pretty much standard on all plastic model kits. But for some reason on the World War II tanks, they are so tightly made that trying to get them on may lead to issues. Namely, you run the risk of breaking some of these smaller finely molded parts we're just trying to get them inserted into the location at hand. Now, for all the World War II's builds, I strongly recommend the use of a needle file, where or some sandpaper will do too, where you can go ahead and remove some of the material on the pegs that we have on these pieces, which will open up the tolerances, thus making them easier to install to the vehicle. I believe the reason why they do this is probably because they have the model to be really a snap together type kit and because of that if you're not going to use glues you're going you're only relying purely on the friction of the plastic but the trade off is when you're doing that you're just going to cause issues of the parts not fitting well so when you're working on any of these World War II tanks keep this in mind and really look into moving some material on some of these parts it'll make your life all that much easier from there, this now takes us to the antenna base. Now, the antenna set that you see here is stock with the model, and oddly enough, the, they went with this horizontal whip type assembly. This is more or less a feature that you find on an M3 Stewart and not so much on the M5. Generally, the M5 would have had the antenna base sticking out vertically, either from the hull section here or possibly from the turret, namely on an M5A1. And from there, this now takes us to the turret. Now, the turret that this replicates is an M5 turret as opposed to the version on the M5A1. The difference is with the rear. On an M5A1, the rear section here continued out more and went downward as it formed bustle. Inside this bustle was mounting of the SRC 508 radio. On the M5, that just wasn't the case. Now, the detailing on the turret is pretty good. We have these little cartoonish stylized visors as well as the Trek Rousers. Now again, with the components that you see here on the turret, it was just like with the tools that I mentioned before, with the tolerances being very tight, so a little bit of hand fitting is required in order to get them to fit on without any issues. Also found on the turret is a machine gun mount, as well as what would be an antenna base mount on the real vehicle. Now the turret does rotate in a nice smooth manner, and the gun does 
elevate. Now just like with the machine gun found on the bow, I went ahead and drilled out the muzzle section on the one on the mantlet as well. Here on the top you can see the periscopes. Note all of the periscopes on the model are painted in gloss black. This again just makes them all pop compared to just leaving everything oversprayed. And finally on the turret here we have the two hatches and they are fully functional which is a common trend seen on many of the World War II's lineup. Now the hatch is installed without any sort of extra hinge equipment that needs to be glued on separately. The hinge is just a curved piece of plastic which is integrally molded to the bottom portion here of the hatches and then there's a corresponding slot that is molded into the top portion here of the turret. Because of that the installation is very easy, but you have to be very careful because the pieces can be very finicky when it comes to time to open and closing them. Also with the finely molded pieces here on the hatches as well as the corresponding locations found on the top of the turret, they are in my opinion very susceptible to breakage, so you want to be very careful when it comes time to actually handling these parts. Now I notice on this build here, even though the hatches are closed, they do tend to stick up slightly from the turret surface, but for the subject matter at hand, it's no big deal. From there, this now takes to the paint and the markings. Now for the model's paint and finish, I utilize my standard olive drab with my typical weathering and shading that I normally do on my builds. Now the markings are the kit supplied water slide decals and they went on without any problems. The decals are very good quality which are typically seen on many of the other World War II's builds that I've encountered in the past. They apply and lacquer on without any issues to mention. Now for skill level and recommendation, just like with the other World War II's builds that I've done in the past, these builds here are very beginner friendly. Basically Anybody can put one of these models together and have some pretty decent results. From the earliest onset of a person who's never touched a kit in their life before to the type of individual who has built numerous kits in all different scales and all different genres. The beginner can take the kit contents, build it out of the box and have something decent, as can the other builders, but the other type of individuals who have more experience can easily take one of these kits and further enhance it from the stock kit offering, making it unique and more their own, which is actually a really cool aspect that these kits do have. The model itself obviously would be recommended for anyone who is a fan of the World War II's video game. If you are into that video game and you want to have some merch, look no further than these kits that we have here. I also recommend this kit for anybody who is a fan of building caricaturized model kits. There are a lot of ship, airplane, and car models out there for that matter that have these weird crazy proportions to them and the vehicles from this line here will easily fit inside a collection such as the ones I just mentioned. And of course these models would be recommended for anyone who's just an avid fan of military vehicles and just want to have something unique in their collection. These kits here do make a really nice gift for anyone who's an avid tank modeler. I will say however that these models do have one side effect and that is that they are extremely addictive. If you end up building one of these models, don't be too surprised if you end up building a few more. Again, they build well, they're fun little builds and honestly when you line them up with each other, they tend to look pretty good in a pack. Now one final thing I want to touch upon was with the complexity of this kit compared to other earlier releases of the World War II's kits. In one of my other World War II's builds, I believe it was either the Panther or the Tiger, I mentioned that those builds are, again, relatively easy to put together, but there are some sections that do require some hand fitting and seam removal, namely the gun barrels and I believe the gun cleaning staves on the Panther. On that video, one of my viewers recommended this particular kit here because he said that these later generation of World War II's kits were better engineered and are also easier to put together. And after doing this model here, I could definitively say he was absolutely spot on. That is correct from what I experienced. This model here requires none of the seam removal work that was required on the Panther and the Tiger. And this model here is also, again, slightly better engineered and is a little bit more user friendly compared to something that will require a little bit more hand fitting like the other builds. Now, not to cast shade on the other builds because what I mentioned in those videos still stands up. They built very well and are still easy to put together. It's just in comparison to this kit here, this kit was still easier by comparison. 
And with that, that wraps up this model showcase video for this undefined scale, caricaturized M5 Stuart light tank. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, be it small scale model showcase videos like this guy here, or the larger project update videos that frequently get posted. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build, as well as the other builds that have been posted on the ECA channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Till next time.